If you were to stand before the throne room of God right now, how do you think you'd respond? Would you fall down on your knees before God like many men did when the presence of God came around? Like John did when he saw Jesus in heaven as he's having a revelation? Would you be uh, repentant of your sins? Would you uh, fall down and, and worry and worship God in the fact that you say, I'm not worthy of you, God. I can't be in your presence. Isaiah had this opportunity. In Isaiah 6, we read, it says, In the year of King Uzziah, death, uh, death I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, lofty and exalted, and this, the train of his robe filled the temple. Seraphim stood above him, each having six wings, and they two covered their face and two covered their feet, and they flew with two. And one of them called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundation of the threshold tremble at the voice of him who is called out, while the temple was filling with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew over to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. And he touched my mouth and he said, Behold, this has touched your lips and your iniquity has, taken, has been taken away and your sins are forgiven. I think in our life very often, we find ourselves like Isaiah where we come before the throne room of God in worship and in prayer and we fall down and we uh, begin to say how sorry we are and how unworthy we are before God. And sometimes I think that is needed, but sometimes I think that we take it too far to the point that we might begin to worship ourselves. We begin to worship the experience of God, I feel sorry, I want to hurt for all the wrong things I've done in my life. And we no longer are worshiping and, and glorifying God for who He is and what He's done for us. The fact that He has forgiven us, the, the, the seraphim comes over and burns his lips with hot coal, kind of signifying the fact to be quiet about your sin and to forget about it. See, the adulterous woman in John 8 has a similar situation. These men bring her before Jesus uh, uh, in the very act of sinning, of adultery. And he responds to her um, in John 8, and it says, Straighten up, Jesus said to her. Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No, Lord. And Jesus responded, I do not condemn you either. Go from here and sin no more. There's almost this response and this understanding that Christ is not condemning us. That when we come to worship God before the throne room, that we are to come and praise Him for who He is and how holy He is. Not for, uh, not coming before Him saying, God, I'm so unworthy, I'm so unholy. Look at all the bad things that I've done. Because then He responds not only in kind of forget and I've forgiven you so forget these things, he responds and he says, go from here and sin no more. I think we sometimes continually come back to God saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and we keep going back and we keep sinning. But he says, you are forgiven, lay it down and go. He says that even to Isaiah, as Isaiah is responding to him um, through that situation, he follows in verse 8 and he says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? There is this aspect that we are to go. We are to forget the past that is behind us and we are to go. It continues in chapter 8 and it says, Truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, but the son remains forever. So if the son makes you free, you are free indeed. We are to live free from our sin. Yes, we are supposed to be repentant and sorry for what we've done, but we are also to live free. Hebrews says it this way. 
Hebrews 12, verse 1, Therefore, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every incumbent of sin which so easily entangles us. It holds us back. Let us lay it down and let us run the endurance of the race. The race is what he has sent us to do, to go out into the world and proclaim his truth. And fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. We are to fix our eyes on Jesus. We're not to fix our eyes on ourselves and say, God, I'm unworthy of you. I'm unworthy of you. And continue to worship ourselves every time we go and worship God. We are to come before God and say, Lord God, how you are holy. Just like those seraphim did that day when Isaiah is in the throne room before God. And it says, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. That isn't moments of, I'm unworthy to be with you, God. I'm so sorry for all these things I've done. But it's literally, God, you are so perfect and holy and I need you. And I worship you for that and I thank you for everything you've ever done in my life. So are we, as I have a question for you, are you fixing your eyes on Jesus? the author and perfecter of your faith, or are you in worship, are you fixing your eyes on yourself and how unworthy and how unholy you are?